Hey, everybody. I am Kevin Ioli. PFL playoffs begin on Friday, August 2nd in Nashville, Tennessee. That's going to be a lot of fun in Nashville. Um, laughing because we had a little bit of a, I don't know what we would call this, technical glitch. But I have her now. Jenna Bishop is joining me. Jenna, welcome. Uh, you got a big fight coming up against Dakota Dichova. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Um, you know, you know, if I look at the uh, the PFL seedings, you know, I think maybe the women's flyweight division might have been the deepest one, right? I, going into the uh, season or into the playoffs, I thought that was true. But when you look at these matchups, you know, you versus uh, Dakota, who was 12-0, and 0, you're 7-1, and 1, and uh, Liz Carmouche, the former Bellator champion, uh, uh, going up against Taylor Santos. I mean, those are, you know, any one of those four uh, capable of winning this thing. Oh, yeah, for sure. For, you, for your standpoint, um, MMA, as I know, you, you were a grappler most of your career, right? What would this mean to you to be able to kind of go all the way and, and win an MMA championship after being in, in grappling for so long? Um, I mean, for me, it's just like proving to myself like what I've always like, you know, known and that like I can do it all like I, I can you know, I, I just really want to prove that I can be the best and that I am the best. And uh, it's more for myself of just like achieving another goal um, and reaching like, you know, the top. For, you know, a uh, little tough. Uh, you had a loss in your last fight. You started off 7-0 and in MMA. You lose to Tyler Santos uh, by decision. Uh, first of all, your thoughts on that decision? I mean, it was a split decision. Uh what what was your what, what did you think and how scared were you when you lose that because now you know it's a, it's a difficult situation playoff wise um i mean for me that was the toughest fight to make in the entire like for me she's the 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 top person in the entire division for me to go against so having her i was like and i thought you know i thought i did enough to win the fight i thought i had like the bigger moments in inside the fight but also it was a really close it was it was really really close and so um things you know didn't didn't go my way but uh ultimately i felt like it worked out uh better for me in in a sense um i it, it I keep saying like it almost feels like that fight didn't even matter but then i got a chance to um you know just test myself against you know one of the best flyweights that there is you know i look at it and i go in what you know it's not like baseball or football playoffs where you know you want the home field or home court advantage whatever you know whatever it is i mean you just want to get into the playoffs right and, mm -hmm. and, and essentially that's what you did I mean, so, uh, you know, what happens in the regular season, as long as you qualify, I guess, doesn't really make a difference. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's a little bit odd in, in that sense. Uh, the point system and everything else is a little bit weird because it's like you have two, only two fights. Like, that's what other sport do you have a season that's only like two games long, you right. know? And then the, the, and it really is heavily, you know, waited on how they do the matchmaking and right. we don't know why or how or anything that that's done. So, you know, I did, I did what I needed to do to get to the playoffs. So, uh, I can't be too mad right now. <laughs> so going up against Dakota, she's getting a lot of hype uh, around her. You know, she's 12 and 0. She's looked good in her, her two wins. Um, you know, do you feel like a little bit of extra because she's the one that seems to, you know, I don't want to say the PFL is pushing her over anybody else, but she's certainly getting the most attention. But of, they are. Of any, any of the other fighters, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't care. It is what it is. It's like the 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 less like uh, I guess that I have to worry about like outside of just fighting, the better for me. So if like I, I'm not really concerned about any of that, I guess. <laughs> Do you, uh, what do you make of her? I mean, you know, obviously, um, you know, she's a, a longtime fighter. Her mother was a fighter, right? So she comes from a, a fighting background. What do you see as uh, the biggest challenge in facing her, and where do you believe you can take advantage? Um, I mean, she's a great striker. Uh, she's tall. Like, she's got, like, the length. And so I think that's something that's, like, a little bit annoying to deal with. Uh, and But, you know, her grappling is definitely lacking, so... I'd like to expose that. Okay, so getting getting her to the ground, 
Do you allow yourself at this point to think about what winning the PFL would do for you? You know, I know there's the million dollars out there, but, you know, I, I would also think that the million dollars being the most significant, but I would also think there's other things that come with being the champion and being, having people say Jenna Bishop, 2024 PFL champion. Do you, do, are you able to kind of lay in bed at night and dream about what that would be like, uh, you know, come November? Um, I mean, I don't get a, like, I don't get too far ahead of myself with that. Like, obviously like it's something I think about, but you don't have to take everything one fight at a time and just make it through for me, like saying like, um the pfl champion this that that's cool um i mean it's it is it's definitely like obviously something that i that i want to achieve that i want to have that title um but it's also one of those things it's like you become the champion and then the season starts over again a few months later and you're not the champion anymore you know it's right. like you're you're not defending your title you're starting back over in a tournament so it's a little bit odd uh you know it's a very short window to enjoy that that season right. i don't get to like keep defending and be like you know trying to like see how many times i can defend my title it's like oh you have to go back and do this whole tournament thing again and you know how are they going to do the matchups this time and how what's the you know what's the circumstances this one so i don't know i guess i don't get really too caught up in that that because it's like it's a different thing than becoming champion and pretty much any other you know um I guess, like sports, sports, or, sports or yeah, like even just MMA specifically. Right. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, the other thing I wonder, you know, and obviously we're getting way ahead of ourselves talking about this, but like when you go to the 2025 season, you know, you're, you're the champ, you're going to probably see the same girls, right? I mean, it, it's like, you know, you know, so you're going to assume like, Hey, you know, these are the best, you know, maybe somebody retires or, you know, whatever happens, their contract is up and they and they move on. But, you know, for the most part that, you know, you're, you're going to start seeing these girls from now until you're done fighting, I would assume. Yeah, which you know, I'm kind of used to that. That's how it was like in jujitsu for a long time. Like basically the girls that I was going up against as a purple belt were the same girls that I was fighting as a black belt. And, you know, there's a few other people but we all kind of came up together and right. everybody's fighting at the same weight so um it makes it uh it is one of those things where it's like that can kind of get boring especially <laughs> like for fighting and for spectators i think you know you don't want to just keep seeing the same people fight over and over again even the same you know outcomes <laughs> you know did you find in uh in grappling when you were fighting somebody there that if you fought somebody like like multiple times that you didn't learn different things like because I, I assume different fighters have different strengths right and and so you if you fight somebody with a different strength you know you're maybe getting more well-rounded did, did you find that in grappling and do you think that applies to mma um i mean yeah i think you 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 kind of it's for me it's just like it's nice to fight the person once and then you know what to expect like they might throw a little like new things at you they might have like people are always getting better and adding new new tools you know and the thing but uh having felt it before it's just it's kind of a little bit i don't know like takes a little bit of the anxiety out of it mm -hmm. where you like you know what to expect to an extent but you right. still can't just stay complacent and think that it's going to be the same fight or the same you know the same match because of course people are always trying to improve and, and, and do things better and have answers for maybe things that you did in, a, in the last one, you know? You were only three years into the uh, pro MMA career. Um, you know, kind of remarkable progress to be where you are, 7-0 and o fighting, uh, you know, fighting in the PFL playoffs. Um, are, were you surprised at all by how quickly you, you were able to pick up on it? And, you know, the fact that getting punched in the face or kicked in the head, you know, uh, that, that aspect is maybe something that, you know, a lot of grapplers don't have to worry about too much. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not really surprised because I thought, like, if I, if I didn't expect this to be my outcome, I wouldn't have taken this path. You know, mm -hmm. this is what I expected to happen. And I'm happy that I... I'm able that I'm like, I'm able to do what I thought I could do, you know, mm -hmm. like I had it in my head. And that was one of the things that like, I knew 
early sparring, like when I'm fight, first time sparring, like full MMA sparring and stuff, I'm like, oh, I, I have to figure out how am I going to handle getting hit in the face? And yeah. it was like, okay, no, I can do this. And then I joke around all the time, but I'm like, I get hit harder in jujitsu than on accident than I do in MMA sometimes. It's like, I've got elbowed and kneed in the face so many different times. I broke right. my nose in jujitsu with got headbutt. So it's like, those things happen accidentally. And I think it's a little bit different when you're not expecting to get hit versus like, you know, somebody's trying to hit you. So you're a little right. mentally prepared. And yeah, but I've gotten like, I think banged up more in jujitsu matches sometimes. <laughs> what, what, where did you feel like your greatest progress came in as you were in the LFA? And because uh, for people who don't know, she fought her first four fights in the LFA, uh, then went to Bellator and out on the PFL. Um, wh where do you think your progress was mostly? Was it, was it putting everything together? Uh, I think so. I think becoming like when, I mean, I had, I had faced a lot of really tough competition right off the, the start. And I think that really helped me to just grow. Cause it's like, you, it's like sink or swim. You got to go, mm -hmm. you're fighting really talented people. I'm not just like trying to pad my record and, and build myself up. It's like, I knew that this is going to have to be like a short, like path to get to where I want to be and so having that opportunity to fight really really talented um opponents it's like been awesome for me and then just ha be becoming more confident in my striking I have a really awesome striking coach AJ Matthews that he just like he understands like what he understands me, like what I need, what right. I need to do like really well. And um, it's a great relationship that he's really built my confidence on the feet to where I know that I don't have to like be desperate to, to get it to the ground. Like I can right. hold my own w wait for my opportunities versus like rushing it. And I think that's been like something that's been really, really good for me as far as like evolving in this sport. Interesting. Before we uh, wrap this up, I just want to, I'd be remiss if I didn't get your take on the other semifinal. How do you see Carmouche and Santos going? Um, I think it's going to be a tough fight. I think that, well, I will say, I hope Santos takes it. Not anything well, against right. this, but because I want to get that one back. Right. That's the only reason. So I'm saying, you know, Santos and, and to me, um, yeah, that's what, that's what I will say. For her to get it done, now, what what do you think is going to be the key for her to get that done? Um, I think just just pressure, like keep keep pressure on Liz and and stay in her face and don't let her be comfortable. And and do you feel who do you feel if you get past Dakota, who do you feel you match up with better? Uh, any either of them, you either. know. I mean, I've trained with Liz, like she's a San Diego like right. girl too. So we've trained together. Um, and I think that, I think I'm a bad matchup for anyone. Okay, very good. Well, I know you think you're a, a, a bad matchup for Dakota Ditchova. Give me a breakdown quickly. How do you think the fight goes and how do you see yourself winning it? Uh, I think it's gonna be, I'm gonna get that submission finish. Another first round uh, submission. I think, what do you have, four of them out of those seven wins? I think so. <laughs> yeah, pretty impressive. Well, she is a great finisher. Uh, apologize for any technical difficulty we oh, had at the beginning, worries. Jenna. Uh, good to talk to you, and uh, best of luck in, uh, in Nashville next week. Thank you so much.